There are only two SOP rules you need to remember about maneuvering and blocking. Rule one, don't move until a rider in front of you moves first. And rule two, anytime the leader blocks, everyone goes right track, single file. Here are the five things we'll cover in this video and some road captain notes. Animation notes about this video. Key rider positions and the animated standard rider maneuvers. Animation of the three kinds of rolling blocks. Animations of how to position and slow for stationary blocks. And finally, the animations of the three stationary blocks. First up, animation notes. First, the animations are not to scale due to screen size limitations. Secondly, the separation between the bikes is tighter than in real life, also due to screen size limitations. Lastly, animations are faster, and in some cases much faster, than in real life to illustrate the point without taking up too much time. Next up, key to rider positions and the animated standard rider maneuvers. Here's the first of the key rider positions for any group ride, road captains. When working a group ride, road captains fill a first, or number one, rider position, lead or leader. Road captains also fill the last rider position, tail gunner. Patched road captains are riders trained by the chapter and are qualified to fill in a vacancy of either of these two positions, regardless of their temporary rider positions in the group. Okay. Let's rewind and go back and look at rider number two. At 27.2, the number two rider position is normally designated as a special purpose position called dash two. At our chapter, this position is normally reserved for the chapter commander, chapter executive officer, state rep, regional rep, etc. Unless otherwise briefed, dash two is normally a non-blocking position. Next in numerical order, Riders 3 and 4. The next two rider positions are the road guard positions or blockers, riders number 3 and 4. Number 3 rider provides blocking in two directions, blocking traffic coming from the left or opposite direction traffic that could turn into our lane. Number 4 rider provides all blocking to the right. Any riders temporarily occupying riders position 3 and 4 are expected to block when signaled to do so unless previously briefed otherwise. These are temporarily occupied positions, not any specific two riders. Let's revisit rider number 2. When no VIP will be occupying the rider number 2 position, the lead road captain may choose to brief this as the position for blocking to the right. This is normal for most small groups where there is no VIP present. The first maneuver is the simple lane change, or more correctly, the tail gunner's rolling block, which can occur anytime the space available is big enough to accommodate the entire group. The maneuver begins when the leader signals for a lane change. All other riders repeat the signal for those riders behind them. When the signal gets back to the tail gunner, he moves over to block the new lane when it's safe to do so. Notice that no one other than the tail gunner has changed lanes yet. The other riders obviously know rule one. Remember, the leader always moves first, all others then move in sequence. Let's rewind and see why we change lanes in sequence. Here is why we change lanes in sequence. Let's see what happens when a rider changes lanes as soon as he sees the hand signal. At this point, only the tail gunner is supposed to move when the lane is clear to do so. Number three commits a rookie mistake, moving before the rider in front of him moves. Now we have a cage trapped right in the middle of where we wanted the group to go, a busted lane change. Let's rewind 
and see it done right. The leader signals for impending lane change. All other riders repeat the hand signal. When the signal gets back to the tail gunner, he signals to and moves into the new lane when cleared to do so. In this case, after the yellow car has cleared. When the leader sees the yellow car has cleared and it's safe to do so, he begins to move the group into the new lane. All other riders merely moving when the rider in front of them moves, resulting in a sequential movement into the new lane. In short, Rule 1. Our next maneuver is the single lane pass, or leader's blocking pass, used on country roads when there's only one lane in each direction. Let's see how this works. Notice that after the pass begins, the green car begins to accelerate. This is so common it becomes the primary reason all passes should be blocked by the leader. An accelerating vehicle being passed can trap a passing motorcycle in the oncoming traffic lane. Because this is a leader block, Rule 2 applies. Note the vacant rider position next to the leader. Let's look a few yards ahead of the green passed vehicle and see why riders go right track, single file, anytime the leader blocks. Leaving the left track available means the leader doesn't have to use the awning traffic lane to resume the lead position. When appropriate, the leader signals to resume staggered formation. Let's rewind and look at the details. How we pass happens in three distinct phases. Approaching either single file or staggered. Passing single file one at a time while in the oncoming traffic lane. And while we position ourselves right track, single file as we come back into our original lane. In this case, we'll assume we've approached the slow moving green car while in our normal staggered formation. Passing is done single file, one rider at a time, from front to back. There should never be more than one rider in the oncoming traffic lane at a time. Because the leader blocks for this maneuver, Rule 2 applies. Here are two questions each rider should ask themselves before pulling into the oncoming traffic lane. Is the rider before me moving back in? Do I have time to complete my pass before the oncoming traffic? Let's watch. Okay, let's see what this vacant rider position is for. The position is left unoccupied as an emergency escape in the event a rider is misjudged oncoming traffic. Besides leaving the left track available to resume the lead, this is the second reason leaders do this block from the right track. Had the leader blocked from the left track, the blue bike would have had to pass both the green car and the leader to get out of the oncoming traffic lane. How much longer would the blue bike have had to stay in the oncoming traffic lane had the leader been in the left track instead of the correct right track for this pass. Filling vacancies in rider positions within the group. Anytime a rider position becomes vacant, all riders directly behind that position merely pull in straight ahead to fill the vacancies in front of them. Normally riders don't cross within the lane diagonally to fill a vacancy. Next up, the three kinds of rolling blocks. There are two types of blocking that motorcycle clubs and associations perform to expedite traffic and protect riders when riding in a group. Rolling blocks for lane changes with a group of motorcycles and stationary blocking of crossing traffic at intersections for the same purpose.
We'll start off with the easiest of the blocks, rolling blocks. Neither of the blocking videos or the SOP are on an endorsement of blocking. Each are meant as instruction only regarding how to block as safely as possible for those that choose to do so. Blocking should always be voluntary. Any rider not wanting to block need only advise the lead road captain and position accordingly within the group. Riders should always make their own safest choices. Ride your own ride. As we've already seen the tail gunner rolling block used for the simple lane change in the maneuvers section of this video, let's now look at the rolling block done from the road guard positions 3 and 4. Here are the two hand signals used by the leader to request a rolling block for the adjacent left or right lanes. Block the lane to the left of us for a lane change. Block the lane to the right of us for a lane change. As is the case with all blocking hand signals, the back of the hand faces the traffic we intend to block. First, let's look again at the primary hand signal in the upper right hand corner with the white background that a leader might use to indicate the rolling block we need. The lower grayed out picture is a potential follow up signal sometimes used to reinforce the primary hand signal. This signal is kind of a push them back or create space signal used after the primary signal above. Using the primary or both these signals is largely a preference of the leader. Rolling blocks are used when the space available is too small to accommodate the size of the group. Remember, the number three and four rider positions are the road guards responsible for rolling blocks. In this case, we see a rolling block to the left which is handled by number three. Watch how the vacant space is filled by pulling straight ahead after the lane change. And if number four formed a rolling block to the right, the return would look like this. As mentioned in the notes about animations, these deliberately run faster than in real life and are done so to save video time while still getting the point across. While it appears that the rolling block slows the traffic in the new lane dramatically in our previous animations, it's important to understand that in real time, rolling blocks are much more gradual and are performed by merely rolling off 5 miles per hour, not more. For that reason, we'll run this animation at nearly real time. The idea isn't to make block traffic hit their brakes, but only to allow a gradual space to form large enough for our group to change lanes. With just rolling off 5 miles per hour at any speed, the blocker creates 24 yards of additional opening for a lane change for every 10 seconds of slowing. Plenty fast enough. When the number five rider pulls ahead to fill the number three vacancy, he or she effectively becomes the new number three and will also block any time two blocks are requested from the left track. Let's look at the tail end of the squad and see how the blockers rejoin the group. Independent of whether the returning blocker is rejoining the group, in the left or right track, he or she merely pulls up behind the tail gunner and waits for the pass me signal. If the tail gunner ultimately forgets to provide the pass me signal, a short tap on your horn will remind him you're waiting to pass. Never pass another rider in the same lane that isn't expecting it. Lastly, the leader's rolling block. The leader is performing a leader's rolling block 
when he moves into a new lane and simultaneously does the pass me hand signal. Let's watch. The leader performs this rolling block when the space available is hopelessly too small. It in fact may be just enough space for his bike, not big enough to accommodate the size of the group. Here's how it looks. With the exception of everyone going single file in the right side of the lane, this block is identical to the rolling block we looked at previously. Here is why we have a rule too. So the leader can return to the lead position while having to use an additional or separate lane to pass. How to pull out of your track to slow and block at the intersection. When approaching a blocking assignment, pull to the outside of your track to slow and safe to do so. There you can slow to a stop for your intersection without slowing or stopping all the bikes behind you in your track. Let's rewind now and see what it looks like when both road guards 3 and 4 have blocking assignments. the three stationary blocks and how they're done. The three stationary blocks we'll be looking at in this video are used for the three directions of traffic at an intersection that could cut in front of or through our path, endangering our riders. Traffic from the right. Opposite direction traffic that can turn left, across, or into our path traffic from the left, and the three positions we'll look at to block each. Three principles to ensure all involved with potential blocking situations are on the same page. First, when there are no road guards at the intersection, all riders cut off by a traffic signal are expected to obey the light and stop. When riders become separated from the group, Lead road captains will slow the group to allow stragglers to catch up or may stop the group when safe to do so for the same purpose. Second, road guards should never move into an intersection against a red light to position for a block. Wait for the green light. Lastly, lead road captains never attempt to deploy stationary blocking at more than 25 miles per hour. The slower, the better. Here are the three stationary block hand signals used at intersections. While the block left and block right signals are mere images of each other, the center picture shows the hand signal for blocking opposite direction left turning traffic. Note that the back of the hand always faces the direction of the block intended. Starting from left to right, let's look at each being performed. First, blocking intersection traffic approaching from the left. Blocking opposite direction traffic that may turn into our path. Blocking intersection traffic approaching from the right. Now let's look at the hand signals expected of road guards. Here are the two signals expected of road guards. The stop or wait hand signal reinforces why our bike is in their way and that we've not just selected a poor location to park our bike. The second thank you or thumbs up signal at the end of the block goes a long ways towards soothing annoyed drivers and promotes good relations with the public. Mouthing the words thank you couldn't hurt either. Both signals are done with the right hand to allow the left to hold the clutch in for a quick getaway if someone begins blowing through your block or any time your position becomes unsafe. The tail gunner will give you a horn double tap 
when it's time for you to rejoin the group. So, there's no reason to take your eyes off your stopped traffic. Watching the passing group instead isn't a safe idea. First up for stationary blocks, blocking traffic crossing from the right. Here's the hand signal for blocking traffic on the right at an intersection and the animation to drive home the point. And here's the reason the area depicted by the green box is the only appropriate position to perform this block. There just isn't any other place free from other traffic flow. You don't have to commit to memory all the potential directions of conflicting traffic. Just remember the green box location. For their own protection, blockers never take their eyes off the traffic until they hear the passing tail gunner's horn. They don't let the blocked traffic run them over while they watch the passing group. Let's look at this same block to the right at a large intersection. Here's the same stationary block to the right, but this time at a major intersection. Notice that nothing changes just because the intersection is large. Note that the green box remains in the same place. Again, here's why. There just isn't any other place. You don't have to remember all these traffic conflicts every time you do this block. Just remember there are reasons we only block to the right from this green box. As always, never take your eyes off the traffic you're blocking. Blocking opposite direction, left turning traffic. Here's the hand signal and position for blocking opposite direction, left turning traffic that could turn into or across our path. Remember to stay in gear for all blocks for a quick getaway if your position becomes unsafe for any reason. Again, we see here is why this block is done from one specific location. There just isn't any other place that it works. Keep your attention on your block traffic until a tailgunner signals you to abandon your block and rejoin the group. Blocking left crossing traffic. As we'll see in a later animation, blocking left sometimes has an additional wrinkle. Having seen the previous two blocks, one might assume this is where a blocker would position himself for a block to the left. Unfortunately, due to having to potentially cross opposite direction traffic, none of this red box is practical to position a blocker. In fact, even if one could get themselves over there, Getting out of this trap to rejoin the group could take a while. Let's see where the road guard really positions himself for the block to the left. When blocking to the left, the road guard moves just enough to the outside of the track as is safe to allow the following bikes to pass. Previously I mentioned there was a wrinkle to blocking left the other two stationary blocks don't have. We'll see what it is when we see blocking left at a large intersection. So far, this looks pretty much the same. So what's the big difference in blocking left at a large intersection? We'll see the difference in this animation. 
But first, let's look at the similarities. Like any block to the left, opposite direction traffic is what we can't block from over here. And as with any stationary block, the road guard keeps an eye on the block traffic. Okay, up to this point, the left and large intersection left haven't differed much. There is an additional chore to block left at a large intersection. Here it is. Be aware and be ready to block as necessary any traffic that may approach from behind. Twice the work of any other stationary block. If pre-briefed, two blockers in this position is a good choice. Before looking at an example of deploying all three blocks, let's revisit a previous animation. As we know, all blocks to the left and opposite direction are performed from the number three position. As riders move up to fill number three vacancies, each in turn can take a blocking assignment. At a large intersection, where one might block opposite direction traffic, and two block left, there's no limits to how many blockers may be needed. This works identically for the number four, or no VIP, the number two position, for any blocks needed to the right. Let's look at all three directions being blocked at the same time. Okay, here are all three stationary blocks with one road guard in each of the three directions. With two left blockers, four is likely the most road guards will ever see assigned on a roll for any intersection. In summary, we've now seen how each of the stationary blocks work, and most importantly, the three positions from which each can be done as safely as possible. You've seen all the potential traffic conflicts now, so don't distract yourself from your blocking trying to reanalyze it each time. Just remember these three positions, move to the outside of your track to slow and stop for the block, and stay in gear for a quick getaway, keeping your eyes on the blocked traffic. While the remainder of this video primarily concerns lead road captains, all riders can benefit by knowing why leaders use some of these techniques. Notes for road captains. Stationary blocking isn't always appropriate. Squads of eight or less riders don't often require stationary blocking especially at signal light controlled intersections. Secondly, blocking should never be a surprise to your group. Any ride that has the potential for blocking should be pre-briefed. The more thorough the brief, the more your riders will understand what you want them to do. Lastly, we've all seen riders try to beat the light well into the red light when they've been cut off by a traffic signal. Brief for your riders you expect them to obey the light and that you'll slow or stop for them to catch up. Yeah, there's rules. Two. First, road captains will stop at all red lights and if blocking, deploy crossing traffic road guards only after receiving the green light in our direction to ensure already stopped crossing traffic doesn't attempt to cross through our column of bikes. And secondly, road captains don't expect riders to break the sound barrier to catch up. Leaders slow or stop the squad when safe to do so. Slowing by far is your simplest choice when riders become separated from the main group. For the purpose of comparison, let's look at our standard practice of stopping at stop signs in pairs where there are no road guards. As always, the bike in the left track moves first. Note that the cages, cars or trucks, also must stop individually and allow right of way for each pair of bikes as we do for each of them. Even with this animation running at three times normal speed, 
and two pairs of bikes managing to cross before the green car came to a complete stop, it took 20 seconds for the last pair of bikes to clear the screen. Let's rewind with an additional observation. In this run of the same scenario, let's keep mental track of the first pair of bikes and imagine how far down the road they are before our last pair of bikes clear the intersection. Also think about how stretched out the squad becomes. This is a perfect case for blocking cross traffic at stop signs. Okay, our last rewind to finish our comparison. Let's compare the same scenario with blockers. Note how much closer the squad stays together and how this short pause in cross traffic eliminates the cages from having to wait for each pair of bikes. And considerably quicker for everybody, bikes and cages alike. Almost always a good choice at stop sign intersections. Okay, two last points about leaders briefing and we're done. First, getting what you intend out of your road guards. Road guards aren't mind readers. Brief them how you want it done. For situations like this one, if you intend to have two blockers at all large intersections with a second road guard into the box to block anything that might come up from the rear, you need to tell them during your brief or risk getting just one blocker. Don't be afraid to ask them if they understood everything in your brief. And lastly, what a brief might sound like to get what you intended. Okay, here's the brief for that left turn off of Jones Avenue that turns on to Smith Street. I'd like number three to give us an opposite direction block for the traffic coming out of Smith, and number two to block right for that southbound Jones traffic. Any questions? If not, let's roll. Okay, that concludes the Road Captain Notes and our video on maneuvers and blocking.